is the best of time and is the worst of time it seems india is standing on the cusp of another reform movement to talk to me on the economic issues and other related policy i have with me montek singh alwalia deputy chairman of the planning commission welcome to dd news sir yes so first question on the reform movement we saw lots of reform past a uh, month on the 14th of september then 4th of october so what's your view on that will they help india regain its growth trajectory well i certainly hope so i mean you know these are not completely new in the sense that uh, many of them have been in the pipeline and uh, you know it uh, some of them had run into some political opposition so the government quite rightly i think decided that they would like to consult more widely so there was a period when we were consulting hoping to get people uh, to agree to the reforms i don't think everybody has agreed but the government has very rightly said that these are necessary for india's uh, growth revival now we're having consulted enough we are going to go ahead uh, with doing the reforms and there's lots more that needs to be done i think both the prime minister and the finance minister have made it clear that if india is to regain the kind of 8% or maybe even higher growth rate uh, that we want uh, then this is only one uh, set of steps we have to continue doing more so in years ahead so steps like uh, what in a sense well i think in the in the most immediate future uh, i think we need to get back the momentum of project implementation in the critical infrastructure sectors of energy I don't think you can get high growth if the prospect is that we cannot manage our energy situation. There were implementation problems. We've set up a mechanism that will try to accelerate these projects. Number of steps have been taken. Coal India is going to sign fuel supply agreements. Hopefully they will be importing some coal to make up the deficiency. They're looking at new innovative ways of uh, exploiting their own mines. maybe even doing some ppp in those areas many steps are uh, in the process so there was a uh, talk about the national investment board but it seems it has run into some rough weather and is it uh, nice to create a single window to solve all the infrastructure problems no no i don't think it's a single window to solve all problems i think it's an extremely important initiative you know when you say rough weather any change involves people expressing a view so this is a very innovative very different way of doing things all we know is that some ministries are not convinced this will now go to the cabinet and hopefully a view will be taken at that level in my view the present system is dysfunctional and we should have a system like this now let me say that the intention is not to ignore uh the ministries that are currently processing uh for approval rather it is to take a holistic view so that all factors can be kept in mind so the ministries that are responsible for these clearances they will have their full say but the final decision will be taken by a board in which other ministers will also be present so talking about inflation inflation has also been big issue what's your comfort level in the sense planning commission or the government's comfort level we have seen high inflation level lots of yeah i think there's no doubt that inflation has been higher than what we would regard as comfortable or what the finance ministry would regard as comfortable you know people vary in what they regard as comfortable i mean typically the reserve bank would probably say that you know maybe 3 to 4% inflation perhaps the finance ministry would say 4 to 5% planning commission traditionally has been willing to tolerate a little bit more so we generally say 5 to 6% and i think the 10 year record uh, of inflation uh, averages about 6%. So I'm saying it should be below 6%. Uh it is not at the moment below 6%, it's above 7%. But the important thing is it's coming down. It was double digit, it's not double double digit now. And my expectation is that uh with good supply side response and good production, uh, I expect to see a gradual softening in the rate of inflation. so diesel prices were increase uh, increase so you think the effect of rising diesel prices would add up to inflation and not at all i think this is one of the biggest mistakes that people make and the reason i think swaminath and ayer in a very nice article explained all this quite well a lot of people think that by keeping diesel prices low you keep inflation low but that misses an important point what is the consequence of keeping diesel prices low it is that you ruin your oil sector or you force the government to give a huge subsidy 
either of those has very damaging effects on the economy. It has a damaging effect on expectations. If you start financing large oil subsidies, the fiscal deficit goes up. Per people's perceptions of India changes. The rupee will depreciate. Money will go out of the country. Now, all of that is going to actually lead to more inflation. So the, the arithmetical calculation that you raise the diesel price, therefore you've raised inflation, I would respectfully say is wrong. Uh, and that, as a matter of fact, if they had not raised the diesel price, it's quite likely that you would have got more inflation because you would have generated very negative expectations about the economy. Mm -hmm.